Hello and welcome to a special update of Next Stop News. Okay, so I'm just going to read my thoughts and opinions on the matter. I was originally intending to freestyle it, but I later decided to write my feelings on electronic paper to deliver my points to you more concisely. So you guys have all heard about and witnessed Hurricane Ida's remnants on the evening of September 1st. I first want to say rest in peace to those that were killed by it, and may those affected by it be granted a swift recovery from it. Without further ado, let's get into the topic of this video. On September 1st, Hurricane Ida's remnants came to New York City and flooded quite a lot of buses, way more buses than previously expected. The first image that was shown to us was the 3rd Gen 7047 partially submerged in water, and everyone thought, like, okay, that bus is going to get retired early. But no, it happened to be a tenth of the 3rd Gen fleet impacted by Hurricane Ida's remnants, and we were all shocked about that. Nobody expected the 3rd Gens to be hit this hard, especially because they're a fleet that has at least two more years left in them collectively. I have this program called the Final Bus Plan where I basically tried out the stuff I want to fan from now till 2027, and I was not planning on fanning the 3rd Gens till about 2023 or 24, or at the earliest when the cone has arrived on Staten Island, forcing me to make my way back to St. George for some action. But the 3rd Gens being rushed out of service like this was very unexpected. Here were the impacted units, 7,001, 47, 49, 54, 58, 65, 71, 76, and 86, 9 units total. Now specifically, 70, 47, 49, 65, and 76 were hit first, with the other 5 units pending. Now these were 9 units out of the 93rd gens, like I said, a tenth of the fleet, leaving only 81 in service. That's why I call it the tragedy of the 3rd gens. You also had LFS's 8221, 36, 44, 46, and 8400, which were all impacted by the storm. And you even had some 2019s, which really saddened me. 8702, 8703, which is by the way my Discord number, and 8714. This was 8 LFS's in total. 8244 and 8400 were hit first, while the other 6 were placed into the pending section. But as you know, once a bus is placed into pending, it never leaves the gulag. Basically, quite a lot of buses got hit by Ida's Wrath and Castleton Depot. In total, it was 17 local buses that got hit by the storm. You also had some express buses, but the overall damage on the express fleet wasn't viewed as intensely. Only 6 units were hit, 2 of which were 2008 MCI D4500 CTs that were going to retire anyway, 2220 and 2225. This reduced Castleton's total of CTs from 10 to 8, but still, it hit 4 Prevosts. Though this can be viewed as a small matter, it is actually a major fleet loss as Castleton's express bus fleet is very small compared to other depots. I think it's like 50, 52 buses in total? So that's a considerable impact. The Prevost that were hit were 2645, 2668, 2673, and 2716. That's four buses. 2716 was hit first while the other three buses were placed into the pending section. The way that I see this impacting the transfers between Meredith, Castleton, and Charleston is that Charleston will end up keeping more D4500CLs than they were originally intending to because Meredith will likely send 5 2015 to 16 Prevosts to Castleton instead to resolve the shortage caused by Ida. Four for the destroyed Prevost and one for a destroyed MCI. They already sent 2703, replacing the other destroyed MCI. So Meredith's Prevost will replace the Prevost that were destroyed, whereas they could have been replacing solely MCIs had it not been for Ida. Attention has been diverted from fully retiring the MCIs to just making sure that Castleton has a runnable fleet due to this unexpected fleet tragedy. I see one of three possibilities. The 2008 CTs will either be fully wiped out and some CLs will stick around anywhere between 3 to 10 units, or the 2007 CLs will be fully wiped out while Castleton keeps the 8 remaining CTs as a reserve fleet, kind of like how Yukon kept the 7 flip dots until April, or both depots may keep a small amount of MCIs. It is highly unlikely that anything will be pulled out of retirement, however. 20 year old flip dots are not coming back on the scene, period. They're over the hill, their time is done. We're not going back to 2002. We'll also have to see if their extra Prevost in the option order could also retire some MCIs. There is also a fourth option which I forgot about. The two depots, Castleton and Charleston, may say screw it. We're going to retire all our CTs and CLs regardless of whether or not we have a fleet shortage. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. As I said before, 17 local buses got impacted out of Castleton. Though it does not seem like quite a lot, there's still a considerable amount of the fleet considering that Castleton's local fleet is the backbone of Staten Island. Therefore, the Bronx and Queens had to pick up the slack. Kingsbridge, Gunhill, and Queens Village all sent 5 2015 LFSs each. 
8369 to 8373 were sent from Kingsbridge to Castleton, and 8324 to 8328 were sent from Gunhill to Castleton. The LFS HEVs proved to be vital, as they allowed Kingsbridge to have a surplus, thus being able to give away quite a few buses without any immediate replacements. Gunhill, however, did not. As a result, to make up for Gunhill's small fleet shortage, Kingsbridge and Manhattanville sent some next gens to Gunhill, increasing their next gen total from 21 to 26. Manhattanville was able to contribute as they themselves are also receiving LFS HEVs. 8480 to 8484 were sent from Queens Village to Castleton. In total, Castleton got 15 LFSs to resolve the shortage. This is contrary to what transit fans like myself initially thought would happen that Manhattanville next gens would return to Staten Island. However, 3941 from Quill was seen training on the island in early September, but nothing amounted of this. But the way that the MTA did things makes much more sense. As a result of these transfers, Castleton's spare factor has only dropped by two buses. This also means that Kingsbridge has significantly less 2015 LFSs than they had before. When they originally got the 2015 LFSs, they had about 40, but they lost 8 over time to Staten Island. They lost 8359 to 8361 to Yukon a while ago, and they lost 8369 to 8373 just now to Castleton. This leaves Kingsbridge with only 32 2015 to 2016 LFSs, those being 8362 to 8368 and 8374 to 8398. This is interesting, as it secures the 2019 LFS's position as a dominant standard fleet. The 2021 LFS HEV count is literally right behind the 2015 LFS's count right now. Ida has drastically impacted the course of events of future orders, especially the Conehead arrival. Originally, 20 Coneheads were slated to go to Castleton to shift some LFS's to the Bronx and Queens. But now, it looks like when Castleton gets the 20 Coneheads, they'll just shift back all the LFS's that were sent just now. Or they could shift nothing and use those buses for fleet expansion. In this case, this will hinder the Bronx and Queens from retiring the rest of their next gens. And when a portion of either the 375 electric bus order or the 714 standard bus order arrives at Castleton sometime in the distant future, when it is actually time for the third gens to retire, they won't need to retire as many on Staten Island, as it will only be a matter of retiring 81 buses instead of 90, which may free up buses for other depots as well. But yeah, this just means that when the cone has arrived, Castleton will have more LFSs than previously expected. It was a very unexpected event that occurred, and I definitely love how the rest of the depots pitched in to help Staten Island. They toughened up and showed love to the depot, which was absolutely amazing. I am saddened about the third gens, however. They don't belong in Eastchester this early. But sadly, there was nothing they could do, as the units were damaged beyond repair. It was a total shame. This did not have to occur. Had only more flood proofing measures been put in place to prevent buses from flooding, this may not have happened. As you know, when water gets in a bus's engine or even a car's engine, it will cause the components of the engine to stop working. Once that happens, the vehicle is finished. You can't use it anymore. That's why you're seeing the loss of 10 year old, 5 year old, 2 year old vehicles that weren't even at the age of retirement yet. It's very, very disheartening. The entire event made me reevaluate my fanning plan. My plan was not to touch Staten Island till the cone has arrived, but now I really want to go to Staten Island to pay those third gens a visit. Because I must admit, I severely neglected the third gens, just like how the MTA neglects the third gens. Wait, what? Uh, why do you think I haven't been showing you guys an abundance of third gen pictures in this video? Because I don't have them. Heck, I probably fan the third gen CNGs from Nice Bus more than I fan the third gen diesels from the MTA. The same fleet which everyone supposedly viewed as cool has been overlooked underrated even. The third gens are an awesome fleet. They served in Queens Village and Omer Park, but now it's just Castleton, but still, they kick some serious behind. Not that I hate the fact that they're only on Castleton, I definitely think that the third gens were advanced technology, and I know a lot of bus fans that absolutely love them. I will no longer overlook them. That was a mistake. I'll visit them once I get the chance to, but the likelihood is that I'll probably end up waiting for the Coneheads to arrive. Then, once the demand is built up for me to go back to St. George, I'll head out there to fan the third gens and the cones together. I do wonder what the future will hold on this matter. You're going to see some numerical gaps in the fleet rosters. Don't freak out about that. Just know that a natural disaster did take place, and that if New York City doesn't prepare for future natural disasters, this can happen again on a much larger scale. Enjoy what's left and cherish what we still have. This was definitely a trying lesson, as this wasn't even a full-blown hurricane when it hit New York. 
Could you imagine if an actual hurricane hit New York again? Depots should prepare for future catastrophic deadly flooding events by fortifying and toughening their infrastructure. We can't just relocate the depots on a hill somewhere, so we should do the next best thing. So that's my take on the matter. The conclusion of this video was, depots should be prepared for flooding events, and we should cherish the fleets which we enjoy. And I can't wait for the Coneheads to go to Castleton. I'm not really sure if they'll change the fleet assignments because of these drastic events, but I really hope they don't. I don't want to see Coneheads not go to Staten Island. I definitely want to see them go to Castleton, because that's going to be really nice. I also never knew that Staten Island was this vulnerable to water, so it was definitely a trying lesson for everyone, self-included. So with that, I sign off. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, stay blessed, stay healthy, stay hype, and thank you for riding with Next Stop News.